So, okay, so hi everybody. Here we are, and I will actually record um, a, a session with the previous beautiful photos that Dini sent and i'll just have another video on youtube just in case but you're gonna get a bonus and great to see you and i sent you guys these two references let me know which one you'd like me to start with uh which one do you prefer the top one the brightly colored one you like the bright I agree. one yeah, I agree. Yeah. All, all along the bright. Okay, so we're going to start with the bright one. And because we are going so fast and so expressive, I added a second one just in case we want to paint a second one. But okay, sounds good. So we're going to start with this. And <clears throat> what I like about this, obviously, is the color. A lot of full, fun colors. It has high contrast here where the beak is it's just a beautiful beautiful photo with this uh, also nice branch that it's sitting on it, it adds some more texture in the background too so let's start sketching this and again we're starting with uh laying it all out let's put this wooden branch a little bit lower not in the middle make sure you don't just cut your paper half put it a little bit lower like the lower third and make sure it's not straight across but follow that little tilt so to create some dynamic movement in your composition and just we're sketching it very quickly here so uh, pay attention to this bird it takes really a nice substantial space here in our paper in the paper so, always the big shape first, uh, there is this little beak. So the birds, all, although they do seem kind of like one big shape, they have two parts like everything else. They have a body, the head, and a little tail sticking out. So pay attention to these elements. So there is this little head right here, something. So also measure, you know, width versus height so I'm gonna just use my pencil so if the width is the widest part is let's say from here to here I'll say yeah. so that's just about right so there is always a tilt that beak is not quite horizontal and or straight it has a bit of a tilt going on and now we follow now there the birds heads are not quite round they, there's like they're over so pay attention to these things when you draw it we're going to follow this wing and go low right there and here is the tummy so there's lots of softness to these feathers as i'm drawing it i'm also kind of absorbing the impression that i'm getting from this wonderful reference and i see so much softness also some high contrast around in the contrast to the eye and the beak which is nice and sharp so they will have all these opposites that we keep talking about so you have hard versus soft and all of the above so very very quickly i'm just indicating all my elements so here we're going to have the yellow part there is this wing so there is a smaller wing here then the back and there are two wings that actually they're meeting so somewhere here is where the two wings are meeting behind him just like that we don't need to draw go into drawing a lot of detail of every single feather we will do it when we paint we'll do that when we paint so, okay, so here is going to be one wing then another and there is the tail and again i expanded it and i made it bigger and bigger so of course my tail will be cropped a little bit and it's going to come out of the page of the paper sounds good very nice and rough here elements of that wood and again his tummy so pay attention to the edges so if you notice here on this part 
the outside is harder. The separation from the background creates this harder edge. His tummy is softer, so we'll pay attention to this transition. It will have a nice soft transition. Usually, you know, your subject basically does command of how you can approach your painting. And then you can take it a notch for, further and have your own interpretations. So here we go. Let me put the eye. Very important with birds. I know sometimes people have the tendency to put the eye above the beak or in some weird location. Pay attention how the eye is in relation to the beak. Usually they're on the same level. So that's what makes the birds look like birds really and not like a human. I mean, again, depends on the birds, obviously, but most of them, like in this case, we are seeing it right pretty much on that same level. And that's pretty much it. And we are ready, ready to paint. Let me just make sure that this part here is nice and thick. Okay. I don't know what this bird is called. I just saw it and I saved it. I forgot to look for the name, but it's okay. It's some, one of these exotic birds. All right, guys, so uh, let me know if you're ready to start painting. I'm gonna make this wooden, this branch a little bit thicker. <laughs> So where you think your light is going to be, I'm just going to erase some of this uh, pencil because it may interfere and show too much. So I will just erase a little bit of all these millions of lines that I put too many. So. All right. And if you just shout out, tell me when you're ready to start painting. I will have here my brushes. I got the brushes. The brushes ready. And I'll tell you what paints, what colors I have here on my palette. I just put them right here. So I have just a regular red, which is like a cadmium red. I have a quinacridone red. Also, rose matter. I don't know, I have maybe too many colors. I will, I'll end up not using all of them. I have Italian burnt sienna. Neutral tint. This is the neutral tint that I substitute for the indigo. Ivory, ivory black. Cobalt blue. Hue. We have cerulean blue. I have a phthalo turquoise in a permanent yellow deep and I will be using also this other yellow which is the lemon yellow <laughs> okay so let me know if you guys are ready and we start doing our magic. So now feel free to use lots of yellows and reds. And you know how we say just keep the limited palette. We can still keep it in a, some sort of a, you know, family. But you can go really wild with your brightness and pure, pure color. So the background should be obviously something green and turquoise maybe i'll make it more cooler not as warm but we'll we'll see we'll just get inspired as we go sometimes things just happen without too much thinking but make it fun bright fresh exciting we'll throw paint around as always Brushes, yes. Here they are. All right, are you guys all ready or no? Almost, yes, I see thumbs up. I see a bunch of thumbs up. Very good, very good. All right, even if it's not perfect, perfect, 
just the overall shape the outside shape everything else will happen as we paint so let's grab our big brush and we will start again with our background so we're going to i'm thinking of creating a nice quiet maybe quiet at the top but as i go down the background could be a little bit more painterly so let's just wet this background with nice quick strokes and you can kind of go around the bird but don't worry if it goes into it i'm just watering it and especially here where his tummy is i will just go into the bird too because i'd like to have this soft transition so i will also go into the tummy so i'm just putting lots of water here and today i got my nice archie's paper so hopefully this is gonna help and make it look better so here we go so i'm just taking the green so which green is this i think this is viridian green i'm gonna make a nice mix here it's not gonna be pure pure green i'm trying to figure out what i'd like to mix it with let's mix this green with this deep yellow and create a more of a very nice green that's gonna create a nice feel of light so kind of a yellow green and we can have some softer not so crazy brush strokes and we can keep going down maybe just grab a little bit of blue and go around your bird here so obviously it should be nice and warm up top because that's where the light is going to be and maybe slightly darker as you go down so i'm just getting a little bit more green and of this viridian green and i just mix it with some blue so i'm just adding some of this blue i didn't make my mix right so i just i'm just grabbing a bunch of paint so this area let's have this area where his tummy is softer so i'm going to go into into the bird with that same color and you can just leave it as this I just went crazy here a little bit so I'm just picking it up and while it's too wet you can you know do a little bit of the spatter the spatter technique that you like and now we're going down we're continuing with this background we're gonna go down and now we have again maybe some yellow don't worry too much about these flowers they can be very soft like we can just put a few blobs of soft pink of yellow somewhere there and i'm just trying to make it more quiet and not as exciting but still exciting enough so here we can just throw in some more paint and don't worry if it goes into the bird a little bit or the tree that's going to be okay and now taking a bigger brush i'm gonna grab some some of this yellow that i have whatever yellow you guys have and you can really just just really put some blobs of yellow here and don't worry if it has a shape or not we want to keep it soft so don't worry too much if it spreads out everywhere and you can like really kind of just make these blobs with lots of water so everything is all wet on wet and i'm just gonna add some more yellow i'm gonna add this yellow on top of this green and maybe more here on this side just it should be really wet on wet spreading out don't worry too much about shapes at this point it's all nice and soft so maybe some more yellow here and with this yellow you can do the spatter a little bit so i'm just throwing a little bit of this yellow here 
You kind of spatter it around. Don't worry about the purple that you see some purple flowers. You, you can, maybe just a little bit, just drop some color here and there. A different color. All right, and now let's take a look at that. So it's nice to have a bunch of blooms. Yeah, why not? Because it's all, uh, it's, a, it's supposed to be outside. It's flowers, everything. So all these blooms will be happening when we throw the clean water on this, in this area. So that should be good. I'm just dropping some more paint here in this purples. And now we're going to paint some nice dark here for that branch. And that should be ideally dry brush. I like to dry brush it, but uh, I know it's probably going to be wet. So let's see what happens. Nice, nice little surprises. So I'm grabbing these burnt sienna that I have, maybe with a natural neutral tint here to darken it. And let's see, not too much water not too much water almost no water and let's see if we can get something more dry brushy not quite but it's okay so if it just has a softer transition that's fine we can always go back and add some harder textures when this whole thing dries so here i'm just going to add some more dark maybe mix a little bit of this green just grab some green to kind of connect it with the background and yeah it's really soft it's spreading everywhere i, I like it okay it's it's okay it's gonna be nice and wet on wet type of technique definitely here and we can always add the texture as i said when it's all dry so there is some yellow moss so let's grab this yellow and you can just add some of that and how you can create a texture is with your paper towel you can just dab it create some texture A little bit of texture not everywhere but just maybe all on the side that's more there's more white to it so very gently we kind of take take out some of this paint and here I'm just gonna add maybe a little orange yeah pa painting tree bark is great it's a lot of fun with watercolor and you can be as detailed as you want but we can add a second layer later when it's all dry so for now i'm just adding some more dark especially here definitely it will need dark to anchor it and there's some more over here be free expressive nothing to worry about again so it does look a bit soft but we can, we'll go back and make it slightly sharper later maybe it needs some lifting here to show that there is a separation or a lighter area on top of that moss right here maybe even some spatter some some stuff to create more texture I'm just taking my paper towel to just try to create some a little bit more texture. All right, so not to worry too much about that tree now. How about the bird? Let's move on to the bird. And I know there's we hardly see any light. It's kind of flat looking. It almost we're losing that three-dimensional feel to it because it's i don't know how it's shot probably there's no really direct light on it but you can always create it and decide okay maybe the chummy here this bottom area will be obviously darker and slightly lighter at the top and that's how we're going to proceed so let's wet this bird 
I'm going to wet it and it's going to be wet on wet again because that's going to create nice soft feeling feel to it not feeling feel to it. <laughs> you're not creating yeah we are creating feelings too but we're just making nice soft feel textures to it so i just have it all wet and you can just pop a bunch of colors don't be too worried about where it is exactly or it goes into the background i'm just popping here now the yellow i like this so we put some nice bright yellows here and i'm gonna continue with this yellow whatever i see it while everything is still wet and i'll just go put here some on that wing now it's nice to have some area that is white the white of the paper so maybe again whatever you guys left maybe on top of his head if you have that just leave it all white just a little bit and here we can add now our i'm just mixing this red very bright red let's mix, mix that with the yellow to create these orange feathers and now almost no water actually i mixed it really thickly so lots of red lots of yellow and very very thick just lay it and i know it's still very wet but it's uh it does create some more thicker feel here and we are following the feathers the shapes so they stop somewhere here and then around the face we have that same thing here so we can blend this a little bit okay now his stomach that i'd like to be like to make it softer so we can just mix the blue and and the, the green we can have something like that and continue here in his stomach so in my case it's already drying over there but i will soften this edge i just want to have a little bit like very free small tiny brush strokes to create this softer feel and i'm going to run some clean water right here and soften these little feathers kind of have it all blend into the background So, <clears throat> so now just soften some edges. Some could be sharper, some should be soft still. Let's lift, maybe lift a little bit here and there. And you can create a little texture with your paper towel. You can just dab a bit or just lift. So this orange, let's get some nice bright red and we can pick that red right here around this dark area around his eye. I'm just putting pure red, like the purest red you have. In my case is Lucas red from Jerry's. It's so good. This red is really good and it's not very expensive. So I'm happy that I got it. And you can just have some little brush strokes with that. Put some red very nice and bright. The top, you can leave some white. If you lost the white, just put some of yellow, some yellow on top. That does create a sense of of white. can let things drip a little bit I just take my paper and make it drip down no worries no fear this should be so much fun even if it all becomes like a big blotchy blob blobs of paint everywhere we can always go back and you know add some more details so it doesn't have to be exactly like it is over there in the in the reference Little wet, some white, 
you're not copying it exactly just adding some nice reds and yellows here basically i'm just adding this this fun yellow everywhere and you can you know wipe a little with your paper towel to create some texture and while well, things are still wet so i'm just moving my paper towel in some direction to create this little feeling of feathers which is very soft nice and soft so just keep adding some of this red now around his face is where all the dark is so um, we can just mix a bit of blue let's get this blue right here and just lay it okay and it looks kind of green so it's okay it kind of keeps it in the family so we can get i have this turquoise here Turqu turquoise blue on my palette which is probably going to be good mixed with maybe some cerulean blue to get uh, to get down to here to his other feathers on the wing they're really nice and blue please feel free to ask questions interrupt do whatever you guys need to do to get this going and now this is almost dry in my case in my case so I'm, I'm able to create little wing uh, little feathers so lots of paint get some more paint just get some nice directions just move your brush in any way Yeah, I have a feeling we will finish this fast, so we'll probably have time for the second one. So I'm just lifting a little bit where the light is on those feathers to create those shapes. And here on this side, let's put some more. more blues and then the blue gets a little darker as we go down so it's important to notice how I lost completely this edge here on the tummy if you guys were able to do that that would be good because we want to have different edges like the one that's on the light here should probably stay more distinct and you pick choose it doesn't matter which edge as long as they're both not the same so to have some variety of both sides so here I'm just adding this blue and the faster you paint the more interesting your painting is gonna look trust me because you're really not thinking too much you're just forced to go with the flow in a way so that whole thinking process is eliminated it doesn't mean that you're not analyzing but you're just using a different part of your brain so you're not confined or intimidated by your own painting you're actually leading it you're the leader in this so here we go adding some more brush strokes so, and you can add some more orange on this side There goes our little bird and now the darks let's add this dark and I have ivory black which is a bit more transparent so it's not so bad you can mix it with a little blue I can just grab some of the cerulean blue mix it with the black to give some tone to it and I will use this for the for the beak and the beak again has a light side and a dark but i'll just put one color and then lift so we're going to lift 
to the right. Okay, and I'm continuing it into his face, and there's some little, just pay attention to these little details that you can just put right away, so there's just little ones here, something is going around, around his eye. And basically, creating this nice dark area around his eye. I mean, these little paintings can be actually painted on small cards. You can do five by sevens and just create a card and there you go, you have greeting cards. So let's soften some, especially here, you can just soften this. Yeah, birds, flowers, they're perfect for cards. They're really awesome, very effective. So here we can just soften some on this side. So. Okay, so I'm missing some blue here. Just basically adding these little blobs of color everywhere. That is fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm just adding something. I'll tensor it just wet on wet. No worries. Maybe that, and don't be afraid of color. So don't use too light color. The color should be intense, really, really thick. So I'm just grabbing again this dark mix. I'm gonna go down to his tail. First, let me just make sure that this is well defined. And I will just lift a bit. dark some darker areas all right and now we're going down into the tail and right under his wings there's some darker areas some darker feathers so lots of paint but less water now we're more into the this heavy paint and more of a dry brush feel I'm just adding where I see the darks so there's more dark here, right between the wings that are meeting. And slowly moving to his tail. So now we have our values basically established. We have our dark, we have our light. We have the medium value. All these colors that we see everywhere is pretty much the medium value. In terms of light, it's just the yellows and some of the lights if we left the paper untouched. So that should be pretty much the values. Keep it fresh. Keep those colors really bright to make this bird look like what it is. And just now it's all about adding some little tiny details here and there and define some of these feathers. So there is a bit of dark right there. There is some shapes. They have some shapes and dark definition, some light. So I'm just adding these little feathers going here. So I don't want it to look too much drawn out. So create and destroy. I'm just lifting some of this little feathery shapes. These edges, some of these edges, I'm just lifting it. So it's just a suggestion. Just a suggestion. Bottom. And yeah, maybe we can just add this blue here. Maybe it's on the wrong spot. Now I'm just painting over it. And I can just lift on top, just lift those shapes. I'd rather lift them rather than outline them with a the dark. You can always pop some dark edge later. 
but too many ones I'm kind of losing the softness of this bird so just maybe just a few and it should be very refined probably I'll take the river and add some nice little tiny lines here's the river brush I'm getting this dark color and define some of these little ones Or a smaller brush it doesn't have to be the wigger brush whatever smaller brush you guys have maybe you can get some dark right here and paint the negative shapes and just a little indication of some a suggestion of some feathers or little ones so we're going into the tail and we can just lift here some that are in the light as we did and here we can just lift some more So instead of painting around, I tend to paint everything, uh, just lay the color and then lift if I need to have a light, rather than painting feather after feather after feather and, you know, filling in. So it's just a diff different approach. It just adds some more softness to it, keeps it all unified. Hopefully the paper allows all this lifting. So there is a light edge. Just pay attention not to all these little details. We're just getting into the details, obviously. So maybe some lifting going on here. Now the eye is all red. inside kind of darker red so i'm just going to add this and we can add the pupil but just leave the little tiny highlight inside of white if you can if not we can pop it with white our white paint so i'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight of white Okay, this little people around. Oh, I, I didn't lift the highlight of the beak, did, didn't I forget? <laughs> I sort of forgot. Okay, so we just wet it because it's already dry. Just wet this beak and you can always just kind of lift a little bit. Now it has more dimension. Just all of a sudden it looks, oh, it looks like all black. Anyway, so... <clears throat> Maybe have a suggestion of that leg. There is a bit of a leg showing that will make it even more realistic. And there's usually one toe goes on one side, the other should go on the other side. But don't make it perfect. Again, just a suggestion so you don't quite have to be literal with that with those feet. I'm just suggesting it a bit. So people know, the viewer will know. <clears throat> and now that tree bark is obviously dry, so we can add some texture while everything in the bird is, is drying. So more paint, less water. I'm just taking some darks. Some of the dark, mix it with burnt sienna, and you can just run it on top of that tree to create this bit of a texture here there not everywhere let's not go too literal with our painting 
So here we can have a little bit of texture, really dry brush basically, running it around here to find maybe some of these edges of the moss. Less water, more paint. Again on this side, we'll continue. So just some dry brush. So now we have variety. We have wet on wet, we have dry brush. We have all of it. And I'm taking a regular brush and getting some of this darker green that I have. And maybe add some stamps here at the bottom. I feel like it's all too flat around and the bird is like plop in the middle. So I need to break it up a little bit. So I will take my rigor brush and do a few lines maybe of stamps here at the very bottom for these flowers a suggestion nothing too extreme just something to just break it up a little bit and yeah even add a bit of color here just little dots a little bit of orange a little bit of yellow maybe spatter, a bit of a spatter here of color. So it doesn't look too much the same, top to bottom and everywhere. So yeah, that's gonna break it up a little bit. And just make, make something interesting really, so it's not exactly like the photo reference that we have. Just adding some groupings of spatter at the very bottom. Hopefully you guys can see. I think my camera is a little bit zoomed out too far out, but hopefully you can see it clearly as that's coming in. So let's add, add some really nice bright accent. Now I'm seeing that around his eye here on that area on the head he needs to have something super bright so i'll grab this very bright red and pop it right here that's going to be the accent on his head and in the whole painting could be like a focal point so it's going to draw you right in there that's super super bright so i'm putting very generous amount of red right here around his face. And that's the little punch that he needed. Just, it needs, sometimes the painting needs a bit of a punch to, <clears throat> to draw, to, to get your eye in it and to stay. Makes it more exciting. Maybe some orange at the bottom here. And little bunches of color, yeah. It's like shocking, bright, super bright color. That's gonna work. So I'm taking my turquoise blue, putting a little dash of that turquoise bright under this very dark black below his eye just a touch of this turquoise, which is almost opaque. Then a couple of brush strokes. And that same turquoise can go into his wings. Maybe just like an accent to define some of these edges down here. So there is that wing. It's a nice exotic bird. It should have very, very bright colors. Just some suggestions of things. Maybe we can mix some of this turquoise with yellow, the uh, lemon yellow that we have, and we get this very cool tone of yellow blue, and you can just pop it here yellow blue yellow blue is actually green so <laughs> it creates just a little bit of a greenish 
greenish tone. Okay. Okay, and create some more texture on the wings. That's what's happening right now. So some more interest, even if it's not quite there, you can always add it. Just making it more interesting. Yeah, on that tail, and we're not gonna overdo it. We're just gonna keep it nice and fresh. We wouldn't worry about too much texture of his wings and the little feathers. Not too much texture because it's going to make it look too overworked. We want to keep it nice and fresh, right? So there we have this orange. Let's emphasize it a bit. More emphasis. Maybe that bright red could pop somewhere else too. Maybe inside his eye. How about a little dot of bright red inside his eye? And even though we don't see this bright red anywhere else, I'm gonna pop it on his tail too. Just a very gen gently, a small little line, like, and a little dot. So we have something communicating everywhere. So there goes our bird. Now we are into the examining, analyzing what we have and deciding and thinking if we should continue more, if we should emphasize with some dark here. Okay, let's just grab some of this dark and maybe punch some of these little wings, but very gently again, a couple of lines, a couple of dots, a suggestion. A little dark going all the way down. All right, and uh, some more emphasis on this blue right here. And that's it. I would not even go any more into that bird. I'm just thinking how to connect it with the background. Somehow something is missing or something. I don't know what it is. Maybe we need to add some more red. Some of this red that we popped in his head at the bottom instead of these yellow flowers. So I'm just gonna pop in some, some more red down here at the bottom. And this way it's going to connect to this bright red in his head. You know, sometimes photos are gorgeous to look at, but when you start painting it, um, may not be quite what we wanted it to be or what we, we were imagining. So it's always, that's your artist in you, has to make decisions of how, uh, how can I make this more interesting as a painting. So it's not just a bird with a background that is all flat. Just create a little bit of an environment. So. I'm going to create some more probably red blobs here. And this way it will create some excitement too. I will just bring this out. And yeah, just spatter. Spatter some. Hopefully this red doesn't dry too brown. And now it makes it a bit more fun. A little bit more fun. So it's not just a bird with a background. See here, I'm just adding some more spatter with this red. And we're not going to worry about it anymore. I'm going to maybe put some white spatter somewhere or maybe just a little highlights in his face. If I've missed some of the light. I can dip it into this titanium light and that is the titanium light. All right, let's see it here. So we can have some some little dots here and there, just just tiny little highlights. If you lost some of your whites like me, like maybe on top of his head, you can have a few. Very dry brush, 
white on the on his very top. I just added it here on the very top. Maybe some here on his beak. Maybe some sticking out, a little couple of feathers sticking out. So these are just tiny little details being added. But not much, not much, just very subtle. Very, very subtle. You can add some white spatter in the background above, around him, on the upper part of the background. Again, not too much, just a little to create a bit of a sense of light. So I'm just adding this thing. So see how we're adding things that we don't really see in the photo. We're just trying to make it more interesting, more and more interesting. So right here where I added this white edge around his face, uh, his head, I'm just adding some white right there. And there it is. And I'm stopping it at this point. It's done. How are we doing with time? Time is 2.23. So we have about 40 minutes. If you guys want to do a second bird, let me know. If not, we can just talk about it. We can go over every single one of your paintings. I personally think we do have time to do a very expressive second one. So let me know. But if you're not even there yet, if you're not even near finish, we can just keep going until we finish yeah maybe more orange now oh, now i said i'm finished but i'm not okay so just let i need to add something a little bit more substantial in his body because it's drying too light so just one last blob and that's it of orange right here And that's it. All right, so there we go. Feel free to show me what you have. Even if you completely interpret it the photo reference absolutely different and you painted it in black and white it's still gonna be great and sometimes maybe even better like if you just painted this in black and white ignore all the color and just put only one color accent in three places it's still gonna be fun so we're not married to our reference it's all free for interpretation seeing something quite colorful <laughs> I'm just looking at the camera <laughs> yeah I, I was just I don't know this reference is fun it thank goodness it has darks otherwise it would have been really flat it may have been almost like a I don't know just color colorful spots here and there but i like that it just anchors it it has this moss right in the middle so it does create values at some Here's point let me see awesome okay i'm going to change my view let me change my view to stack so i can see you guys what you're showing and stack. it's probably drippy Oh, that is awesome. That is absolutely uh -huh. lovely. It is awesome. Oh, isn't that amazing? I love it. I love it. Very free, very fresh. I like how you really kept the top of that background nice and light. I struggle with that. It's actually darker than what it looks like because of the way the light is. Yeah. yeah but I really struggled keeping it light. When the paint went down, it went down really dark. And I tried to, to lift a lot of it. No, it looks gorgeous. I love those wings and the feathers that you did. They're absolutely gorgeous, Dini. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yes. All right, so you're probably ready for a second one. You can just quickly oh, sketch. No, no, you're exhausted. <laughs> I know, we're all exhausted. Yeah, I wish the second one wasn't so complicated. Yeah, that probably would have been a good second, but the second one and the other one could have been a good first one. But yeah, the, uh, this bird is a bit more complicated. So yeah, you yeah. probably need more time. Yeah, for that one. But just keep going. Let me see. Well, I want to take something. I'm glad we're taking August off because I also need to take August off. <laughs> Good. We all need vacations from time to time. I'm well, glad. They're taking August off. I miss that. <laughs> Dini. Dini's taking August. Oh, well, I think Debbie's taking it too. Yeah. Look, I have to lose Debbie. Debbie is going to be in Okay, I'm staying on stack mode. Let me see what, what I'm seeing. Okay, so I'm looking, I'm seeing mine. I don't see anybody else's. Yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, the youngest also. Yeah, I'm seeing the youngest also. Yeah, I'm seeing the youngest also. Yeah, I'm seeing the youngest also. Let me try again. Even when you had mine on there, I could always, uh, uh, mine's sort of small, I couldn't see a thing. Now is she big? And now I see you. You're big. <laughs> Ah, now I see it. All right, good. Awesome. So awesome. I'm still working on it. I just uh, looks like it's got a big gap here, but there's actually it's actually white there, so I should probably put a little bit of color. Uh, I'm still working on it. I just thought I'd show you where I yeah, am. Yeah, no, it looks great. It looks great. I know it's a bit tighter, but I know that's how you work, Kathy. But it looks uh, fabulous. It looks fabulous. No, that's not my goal to be tighter. It is how I work. My goal is not to be tight. <laughs> You can run some water and you know you can actually make it just put some water now that you have this background and the background is very quiet but you can put some water right in front of his tummy and okay. just maybe have this edge disappear a little bit or just pick a different yeah. edge maybe the edge behind him can just disappear and just add some color yeah. and I've been trying that but it's not I'll, I'll keep working on it it just um it causes a strike on the green, but anyway, I'll, I'll work on it. Looks great. Looks great. Thank and you. Add some spatter on the back and at the bottom to kind of make it yeah. connect to the bird a yeah, little definitely. bit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm still working on it. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Ms. Mella. I'm yeah. I'm still working on this too. This is Catherine. Okay, Catherine. Okay, let me see. So the stack is, I don't see you big. Hold on. Ah, okay. now I see it. Perfect. Okay, now you see. I see it looking good, looking good. And I know your colors in the background are completely different in blue, but that's awesome. I like how you interpreted it. The bird looks very good. Um, I wish you could have probably make it more uh, wet on wet to kind of soften yeah. it a little bit. Yeah, it's, a little tight. it's a little tight, but it's okay. It still looks you know, beautiful. It looks beautiful. You know what's weird? When I first started taking classes with you, mm -hmm. because I've had a lot of watercolor, my acrylics always look like watercolor. Now, my watercolors are looking more like acrylics. I see what you're saying. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. It's so funny. So, but you know, I'm using watercolor to kind of thick. Like, I used to use very, very thin watercolor. Now I'm using it more like acrylics. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> no, what's happening is looking really good. And sometimes, yeah, we can mix up mediums in our head and not get and kind of mix them all up and the different techniques. But as long as you're using wet on wet, like lots of, like put a lot of water and very thickly lay the paint on top and it's just going to create this soft blending and okay. looseness. Yeah. Okay. But looking good. Very nice. So anybody else? Can you see it? Okay, that's Chini. Yeah, there yeah. you go. I can see it. That is looking great. Your background matches your glasses. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Chini. You did a fabulous job. Look at the tree. I like the, the branch. The bird is looking great. There's some nice sharp edges there, but some softness too in the feathers. Uh, let me just take a look. You can put some more dark around his eye to make this high contrast there. 
You know how it's blue? It's now just darken that around the eye, that area. Like that should be your darkest, like right here. See how it's a high contrast? Your tree looks really good. You're really good. I love it. It's absolutely great. And I love how it's not in the center of the page, of the paper. Mine is in the center and maybe that's what's bothering me. So eventually if I frame it, you can always, you know, chop, chop a bit of your paper and just frame it differently. So it's all looking good. Anybody else? All right. So we have Wendy. Oh, wow. Look at that giant bird. I love it. Yes, it's very loose. It's very free. Um, and let me see. I like your background everywhere. Uh, you can darken. Your, okay, so your tree, that branch. I don't know why I'm focusing on that branch, but it can just continue being dark on the right side too. And... Okay. Uh, yeah, and add some more that I love how you did the beak and the eyes really dark, but maybe it needs also some dark around his tail. I love the texture that you did on his torso, so like the, this, the middle area. It's really great. I love that. It's nice and soft, but textured. So. Thanks. Yeah. Good idea. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Any brave souls showing their work? Yep, I see somebody else. Oh, there is Gretchen. That is lovely. That is so lovely. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Look at that brush strokes. There's something wrong with the, the background. It doesn't relate to the colors in the bird enough. So I think I need to put more blue or something to make them relate more. To, to connect color. some blue. Yeah, I know what you mean. But actually to me it looks nice and warm. So it connects to the like the warmth. I see the yellows. Basically it connects to the yellows in the bird. But I love those brush strokes with your uh, those feathers are absolutely fantastic. What you can do to connect it is maybe put some some of these red blobs that I added here. So if you want to just do something like that to connect it to the background. So it's not quite quite just experiment, but I love what I'm seeing here. And Maybe also blurry in the background. I like. I love the way you've got that turquoise passage in the middle. In the you middle, know? you can do that. Yeah, just put a lots of water and put with a big brush, like whoop, one big swipe of blue, and you can do that. And it doesn't have to be super light. It could be a different color, right? Yeah. My but part was the branch. I always like stems and branches more than oh. the actual. I know the actual subject, <laughs> but the feathers look fabulous and those wings. You did a fantastic job. I really, really love it. Yeah, and I like how you didn't put it in the middle too. This is great. You guys are really, really doing an awesome job. I put it in the middle, so I'm really bothered by that. So I have to cut my paper before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So good job, everybody. I think someone else is starting to share, but I kind of missed too. Anybody else? Okay. Yes. Okay, so we have, uh, this is Cindy. Sandy. Sandy. Oh, wow, look at that. That looks wonderful. That looks wonderful. I like your background. It's very different. It's very different. It's almost dark. And I like that because it makes the bird pop out. I like that uh, moss that you did here on those trees. I would add some, something bright. Maybe, I know you don't have blues, but just pick maybe a, something bright. Some, something bright here at the bottom of his wings. I, or dark. At least something dark. It doesn't have to be bright, but maybe just uh, darker for the tail and the bottom of the wing. And it's just going to anchor it a little bit. But I even like the fact that you didn't do much with the bottom of this background. So you see, it's, it's a nice, it's different interpretation. So you can make it super light and the, I'm talking about the bottom of the background. Just put water and maybe a lighter tone but make them different so they're not the same top to bottom but yeah definitely a little bit darker wing and darker tail but looks great yeah good job guys <laughs> you you're really doing fabulous i wish we did a bird of prey i well, as i was thinking initially like a crow so hmm, i don't know next time <laughs> Next time, we'll do just, just a class of birds of prey. 
Anyway, so things are going looking good. Anybody wants to show anything? Let me just add some of this down here, maybe separate. So you can do another class of verses, correct? Yeah, that could be a class. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, you put some different reds and oh, you put you put the blue. Okay. You did put the blue and the, the red. Yeah, now it's connecting. <laughs> That's beautiful. Gorgeous, beautiful, gorgeous. And sometimes, you know, when things are looking not quite there, you can do anything you want. You, you can take a stencil. You know what I do? Sometimes I do a stencil with letters. You know, they, they, sh they sell them these little stencils with plastic letters. And I start, like, painting letters all over just to make it unusual and not boring. <laughs> You can just put a bunch of letters or musical notes. <laughs> oh, you care. Uh, it's it's artwork. There we go. And again, always the spatter with the white, which now disappeared. I don't see any of this white that I spattered. So they usually show on dark backgrounds more. So let's see if I can just add it here on the darker. But anything you guys can do to make it fun. It's not a botanical or a, what scientific illustration. You know, a scientific illustration, it's all very, very meticulous, very photorealistic. You're very careful of every single dot and you almost look with a magnifying glass at your subject matter. This is not, this is really creating basically a fun artwork. Yeah. If you, um, you have a creative license pretty much to do whatever you want. And you can add some more details. I'm just adding some more details here. Maybe lighten it up a bit. Maybe this yellow. I should stop working on this, but something is missing. Maybe it's my composition. We'll see what it is. Sometimes when you step back, don't look at it, look at it the next day or turn it upside down and voila. And then you see all your issue, all the issues. And maybe a little yellow here. So feel free to send me pictures to show me what you have. I'm also created a private group on Facebook of student work because not everybody's comfortable of showing their work to the world. So this private group is we all comment. Uh, I basically keep comment on anybody who wants to post. So just student work, things that are done during your workshop. You can just post it and I can just comment right there so everybody can see the comment and everybody can comment on each other. So just find it. It's Ludmilla Tomova student group. I forgot the name, but something like that. You'll find it. I, that's pretty much my only group. Oh, no, I have another one with plain air. A la prima. But the uh, student one has your name in it, so I think yeah. you can search your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they search it, yeah, it's my name. But it, it's nice to have the student work there. And if you guys feel uncomfortable, I can just grab it from there and share it on my page and say, hey, look, look at that. That's student work, students doing fabulous work. Because you, you've done some masterpieces during my classes. I mean, serious masterpieces that I would love to share because I'm very, very proud of what I see. So, yeah. And we just keep adding and adding and adding. So on your own, you can paint the other painting when you have obviously not too much pressure with 
looking at my painting or the timing we can have all the time in the world and just give it a try and post it on that uh, student page it's it is private so it's only for students i am right now i think i have six people but you feel feel free to join I'm just adding some more edges here, just a little edge. I don't know if you guys are also member of the Watercolor Society of North Carolina. If you you sh you should join it. That has a lot. It has a lot of opportunities for showing your work, entering competitions. It's something really worth exploring. Just get your work out there in galleries and shows. I don't think we're quite ready for galleries and shows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are ready. <laughs> you are ready. You'd be surprised. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I love that plug, Lumila. The yeah. other thing, too, is you guys might want to consider joining the Fine Arts League of Terry if oh. you're not a member. Totally. And just a wealth of information, too. They have critiques and. Um, they do shows, etc. So. Oh yeah, definitely. I highly encourage it. And final, the final bleed of carry is a great one because you don't even have to be that adv uh, advanced at all. You, I've seen a range from very advanced yeah. to not so advanced. As a matter of fact, I think I'm speaking. I'm doing a demo this Wednesday for them. Uh, you are. Yeah. Wow. I love it. They invited me, so I'm going to have a little demo and I'll speak about my process. So I think I'm going to demo a portrait because that's pretty much one of my favorite things, painting people. So, <laughs> so that sounds Hello. cool. Hello. Where are you speaking? Where did you say you're speaking? So it will be on, uh, on Zoom, but it's for the Fine Art League of Cary. So if you guys become a member, I think they will send you the link. And we are having Wednesday at 7, I believe okay. on the 23rd. Yes, I'm having a demo talking about portraits and my whole process. It's not just about portraits, but I'll talk about the pro whole process in general. And we'll have Q and A, and just a little thing that the Fine Art League of Kerry is doing. They invite every month. They invite an, uh, some or an artist to do a demo and talk about their stuff. So, and also they have lots of exhibiting opportunities all around town. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, on Facebook, you can uh, search for Fine Arts League of Kerry, and there's Lou Mila right there. Oh, really? Am, am I there? Oh, I should go check. You're, you're in a post about what's happening. That's good. Such a lovely daughter's portrait. Oh, they put that one. Yes. I'm so happy. That one got into the San, San Diego International Show, so I'm, I'm about to send that painting there. Yeah, they do, a, they do some fun stuff. They uh, just finished up a plain air at Historic Oak View Park in May. So they do a lot of fun stuff. Oh, yeah, that is so cool. And yeah. I happen to be the town's liaison to them. So I'm, I'm really putting in that plug, too. Yes, we're putting a lot of plugs, which is all good. Yeah, the more, the merrier. And the more we, we participate in the community of artists, the more we help each other. And it creates a really fun, fun environment for everybody. So, yeah. Definitely. So Do you have to live in Cary to be in the Fine Arts League of Cary? No, I don't no. think so. No. And it's only, what, $30 a year? It's not. No, I don't even know. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't think you have to be a Cary resident. Actually, you just said that you. Most of their meetings in person are usually held if they open it to the public. Also, some of their meetings, but um, yeah, it's not that expensive for what you can get back out of it. That's for sure. 
Julie, you're a wealth of wealth of information. You <laughs> really are. Yes. Yeah. I just can't tell you how much I get it talked. Yeah. I tried to say hi to all of you. Just think it would be on a Facebook page. Yes, Julie is always there for us. She's always there for the rest to the rescue. You know, I can do anything without having anything. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes, we are nothing without the students, and it's a nice, beautiful symbiosis that collaboration that we're doing. So every. <laughs> Yeah, it's wonderful. So, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dan Nelson. He's a, um, a, a fairly well known artist, also. And he does a series of critiques for them when you sign up ahead of time. And he will look at your painting, he will take a picture of it, and then he will make changes on the picture so you can see what he might have done differently. Yes, Dan is super good definitely definitely a great source resource he's the only artist i've ever seen that paints with both hands at the same time i know isn't he like he goes he's like this when he paints yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's awesome he's really good so definitely his critiques are very good to attend. Yeah, if you guys have suggestions of what you would like would be with us in September, we're getting ready to, oh, excuse me, for the whole fall for that matter. Oh, yeah. Uh, you are welcome to send me an email. I love input and feedback from students because you guys are the ones sitting there with the paintbrush in your hand working along. So, um, there's something that you're interested in, pass it on, and I'll, I'll talk to Ludmilla about it, see if he can uh, get yeah. her to offer it. If there's some other type of theme, besides birds of prey, I like that one too. I have a <laughs> dog that lives close to my backyard. I'm just hoping he doesn't get my bluebird family. <laughs> <laughs> family this year. Oh, nice. Oh, that's so cute. Yes, absolutely. Feedback, guys, is very, very important. Anything you want. We are here for you, and I'll be happy to really give any class that you have a need for, so. I don't think I've ever found anything that you said you couldn't paint with me. <laughs> like jack of all trades. <laughs> yes, I including, I teach drawing too. I used to at the Hive when we had Hive open, so I can teach drawing as well, which is crucial. If you really want to become a serious artist, you guys have to have... And acrylics and oils. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to have so many. I used to have three classes per week. Remember, we had, we had acrylic, oil, watercolor. <laughs> And you taught at the Hive and the Cary Arts Center. Oh, yeah. And you taught, taught in two of our locations. That, yes. That was, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. If I could clone Ludmilla, I would clone her too. Oh, believe me, I would love to clone myself. <laughs> <laughs>